So let me get started. This is class one of the intermediate class. Oh, great. Thanks. Yes, I did turn my speakers off. So, Tammy, you must be watching my eyes. And I'm no longer watching the chat. Tammy is our moderator today. And one of the things she's going to be doing is collecting questions as we go along. And then I'll stop occasionally and ask for questions and she'll feed them to me. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Sue Fuller. I was the teacher of the design class for many, many years. I, I too saw my grandmother tatting when I was very young and it just was fascinating and watching the shuttle just dart in and out and she was so fast, I was amazed. Um, but I did not learn to tat at that time. I um, was about 22 after I had inherited her shuttles, decided that I wanted to learn to tat. And I really couldn't find anything on tatting except for the little green learn how to tat book put out by Coates and Clarks that is still available. Um, oh, shoot, my camera just, I'm glad we're getting new, a different camera because mine does not want to stay in place. I'm so sorry. Sorry, Tammy. Well, I'm going to put it down for now and just talk to you now that you've met me. That'll be best for us all. I think one of the little screws on my camera is um, not working quite well. All right, I think we're ready for the down shot. Okay, sorry about that. And I forgot to cover up my camera when I moved it. So I hope none of you got busy or got <laughs> busy. <laughs> I guess I've got a tied up tongue today. Um, you can still get the books. I came across two of mine that I have from different um, times through the years. Here's one, and it is, um, the interesting thing is, if you notice the doily in the background, this other version also has the same doily, but it has flowers on top of the napkin rather than a ring and all. So they use the same background doily, but they changed the um, um, decorations around it. When I went, I never, I've, I picked up the shuttles in, I think I was 22. I've been tatting for 51 years now. And finally, it took a long time to get the flip, which I think many of you are probably um, familiar with that problem. And then I did find a book at the library. In 1990, we moved to Colorado, and I was so excited to move out here because in the back of, a, I keep closing my eyes, in the back of a lot of the um, craft magazines that I had, I would see advertisements for beggar's lace and they carried tanning supplies. And it was here in Denver where we were moving to. And I was so excited. And that was one of the first trips I made was to go down to beggar's lace. We lived about 50 miles. Um, now I guess it was about 30 miles north of Denver. And so I drove down there and got to know Gretchen who owned it at the time. And then I ended up going down there and working for her twice a month, um, packing her boxes and sending out supplies. And she's the one who got me really going on a tatting book. You may recognize My Heart's Desire here, um, which was in my, my book. It actually was just a tiny little booklet that I sold in the early 70s. And um, this is it. 
but it was, I did it on a copy machine. I actually have my pages. I just, I typed them out in a word processing program. Then I glued my samples on to the pages. And then I went to the copy store and made copies and then put together the booklet, all black and white, no diagrams. Um, it, uh, when I started tatting in, in Colorado and started teaching, I wanted my beginner students to have something finished. And I had, I always taught on, um, it was called speed crochet at the time, and it's about the size of Lisbeth's size three thread now. And this is what it was like, but it came in a lot of colors. Um, but that's, you can see how big it is. It was a little firmer cord than um, the Elizabeth three. It was actually used by a lot of crocheters to make placemats and things. And then they stopped. Um... Oops, I looked up at the chat. <laughs> and then we, um, they stopped making it. And I was so excited to get size three because I like doing my samples out of it. Here's some samples for my pieces from my book, one of my snow, beginner snowflakes. And the reason everything is pink, even the snowflakes, is because the bright pink um, was the best color to get the best copy made. It copied better than any other color. So everything is this pink. Um, uh, in case you're one of the people who has asked through the years, I still sometimes um, work on my the redo of my tatting book. And I've often said, well, it could be coming soon. I'm working on it. And it doesn't happen. That's one of the reasons I stopped teaching the design class, thinking I'd go on with that. But I just can't give up teaching. So here I am. Okay. We have a couple things to talk about. To begin with, we need to talk about copyright. Um, oh, whoops, before that, I want I would please subscribe to our classes, to our channel, and click on the bell to get notifications of new videos and anything special going on. And please like our videos. We are a G-rated channel, um, and so we will not tolerate um, any foul language, adult content, and please respect your classmates and be kind to everyone. Um, if you don't, um, if you do, if you do use follow language or anything that's not appropriate for our educational G-rated channel, um, after three warnings, you can be banned. And I hope none of you want to do that. <laughs> um, as you've noticed, a lot of people come in early and that's the time that you can chat with each other and get to know each other. Or we have a Facebook page. Oh, I don't know, Tammy, do you have the um, address handy for that, please? Um, and that's when you can chat with the others. But once the class starts, then we're only talking tatting. So please don't go off topic or chat with your classmates. Um, off and on, I will stop to take questions, like I said. And if you have any questions, go ahead and ask. Our next topic we have to talk about is copyright. It's such a serious issue and we take it very seriously. Um, even for our classes, for the patterns that we teach here in class, we get a signed permission slip from each designer who is um, who we thank very much for sharing their patterns with us. One of the things about copyright is there's a lot of misinformation going around. And 
I think one of the big things I tend to hear is that it's okay if you only do like 10% or 25%. There are no percents in copyright. Um, if it gets down to some <laughs> any type of percentages, that would be dealt with by a copyright lawyer. But just know, to me, if a pattern, a good guideline, if you recognize someone else's pattern in a design, that's a very good sign that you can't use it unless you get permission from the designer. Now, a lot of people make adaptations or versions and the problem with that is you still should have the designer's permission to do that because they still own total rights to the pattern. Um, like a lot of sometimes people will copy a pattern just by looking at it and figure out all the stitches. But you are not allowed to sell that. It's not your design, even though you figured it out from their pattern. It still belongs to them. You can't sell it. Don't publish it. Um, and e don't even post it on the internet um, without giving credit to the designer for the pattern that you, and make sure that people know that it's something you adapted or it's a version of something, of someone else's pattern. So we do have two documents. Um, one of them will be available tomorrow. It is available in the Tatted Threads Facebook page in the files. That used to be our class Facebook, but now we have a private one just for class members. I, um, oops, I lost my train of thought here. <laughs> That's going to happen once in a while. Um, the best way to support our designers are to buy their patterns. You know, there's some designers who have had their patterns stolen and they've stopped designing. And that that's not good for any of us. We need new patterns. We need new designers. And we hope that by going through our classes, our beginner, intermediate, and then on to the advanced class, we don't have a design class right now, but it will be coming back in the future that many of you will go on to design. Uh, the next thing I... I, oh, are there any questions about copyright? Give me a minute, see if there's any been any questions. Uh, the second document that will be available or that is available in the Tatted Threads um, Facebook group is a document that I put together. It, um, I, there's the Copyright Office puts out a special guideline. It is online to help out non-lawyer type people <laughs> like us. And it's kind of a condensation and goes through, gives you information about a lot of areas because, you know, to help you because, I mean, we can't go, th going through the copyright laws themselves would be, they're very complicated and extensive. So I made copies of the things. I, I, I mean, I just copied quoted statements from those guidelines. And I've provided links to the pages on the, on the copyright. The, now, I'm talking USA copyright. A lot of um, other countries don't have copyright laws. There are... Um, I think quite a few that the U.S. has um, agreements with about copyright laws, and that's a whole nother area. <clears throat> I'm going to take a quick drink of my tea.
Other than that, I think we'll, we may talk about this off and on throughout the um, cl upcoming classes. Class is are going to be in six week sessions. We'll be teaching all the classes six weeks on, and then there'll be two weeks off during which time, hopefully you guys will have some time to really practice and try what you've learned in classes. And then we'll be on again. There are some holidays. There um, is a calendar schedule now that's on the homepage of the georgiasites.com, which is our website. And it's down in the middle on that homepage. It tells you when our holidays are. So you'll know when there won't be classes and where, when there will be classes. In this class, we're going to kind of start at just a little few basics today about your supply kit for these classes and what you'll need. A lot of you went to um, Angie's class, I think yesterday, and saw the beginning supplies she showed. Um, Every class, you will need to bring a supply kit. Your basic, it's your basic tatting supplies. And you may have them in a bag or a box. I was given this little, it's a folded in half um, pot holder, padded pot holder with a button on it. And it's really nice because this person was a sewer and I'll show this in a minute. This is an eyeglass case. I'll show you what's in it in a minute. I keep in the pages, these little baggies were sewn in. And I can keep everything in here that is small enough. Then we'll go through the supplies in a moment. First of all, you're going to need at least two shuttles for this class. We'll be working with two shuttles a lot. And you also your thread. When you're beginning, uh, to, when you're learning new techniques, even if you're not a beginner, size 10 thread is very nice to start with. Although in this class, you can use size 20 or for some of you more advanced people who are here, um, you're probably working even with size 30 and smaller. So this is the Artiste brand that I think it comes from Hobby Lobby. And I'm gonna mostly be using that same hot, that same pink that I used for photocopying and this blue. Uh, there's also um, Aunt Lydia's crochet thread that you can use, which you can even get at Walmart. Um, Handy Hands, who actually is our sponsor this year, she has a size 10 Elizabeth. Now Elizabeth does um, tend to twist a bit, and I'll show you a couple little tips for that in a minute. And all colors of, I love the variegated, just like Angie. <laughs> One of the things you do not want to do when you're learning techniques is use black or like this one, a dark blue. It's very, very difficult to see your individual stitches. Um, they just don't show up and it would, it's hard to see what you've actually done. I know my mother would never, she was an avid crocheter, but never learned to tat. And she would, didn't even want to ever crochet with black. And I've heard other people say that too. It's just dark colors like that, especially black are very hard. Although we do want, like I showed you two for this class, two contrasting colors. So you can see uh, how the technique is <laughs> doing. I have to move things backwards on this camera because it looks upside down to me. And medium colors to me are, are the best. You can use light colors too for the class. Um, another thing, if you never have, this is a little tip. These are little barrettes. 
And they even come smaller. These are little, and these tiny ones you can find in the baby department and the children's department usually. Um, I think the children's one even come in the beauty part, but usually the mini ones, you'd have to go to the baby depart department to find them. And I have bigger ones that I use on my um, larger threads, my size 10 balls. Okay, another thing you're going to need in this class is just some plain old, um, this is a really old Clark's brand thread. Uh, polyesters are better. Um, you, uh, a cotton embroidery thread will, if you're pulling hard on it, which we sometimes need to do for, for a technique that, that we'll learn later in this class, um, we'll need this. Thin, just regular thread and I would get polyester. And the other thing um, is when you're finishing ends, rather than using a loop of thread, you can also use, and these I want to show you are in my tatting bag. And they are They are dental floss, dental threaders. And they just look like, whoops, that's blue. That doesn't show it up very good. Let me show it to you. They come in a plastic box like this. And I'll move this out of the way. There you go. Now you can see the dental floss holder. We use those for finishing ends, and we'll learn how to use them in this intermediate class. Also, you're going to need a pico gauge. There are a couple different kinds. We have um, the handy hands that, of course, you can measure picots. It has a, a little three-inch ruler on the edge, holes for tatting needles if you're a... a to size your tatting needles if you're a needle tatter. And the other thing, there are individual. I was fortunate enough to get a set of these wooden. Actually, Georgia Sight's husband used to make them. Individual Pico gauges. But I often, even though I have these, I often, one of the things I keep right here in my tatting kit also is some sticky notes. You can just take a sticky note and fold, keep the sticky side up and measure the length you need and just simply fold it up. It won't last forever but at least um, last through a few of your projects. That's just a quick and easy and cheap pico gauge. A lot of people will make cut them out of um, old credit cards. You get a lot of those plastic ones in the mail for things and fake ones. The next thing you're going to need is your, are your scissors. Now, you do want to get either embroidery scissors or you want to, to get some real good manicure scissors. These I saw and I love the color purple and I picked them up, but I found they haven't lasted very well as far as um, the cutting. But different, uh, I think there's a good Fiskars brand that's real small that you can get. The manicure scissors, I like the ones that have a little bit of the curved edge on them. You're gonna to wanna to get really close and have sharp scissors to cut off your ends so they don't show. Another tool, I 
cannot do without are a pair of tweezers. Now, some people will use heckle pliers or um, what are those other scissors called? The, I can't think of the name right now. The clampy scissors <laughs> that you can usually get from a doctor or a dentist or a nurse. <laughs> they use them in surgery. Um, when you pick out a pair of tweezers, make sure some of the cheap brands have very sharp metal edges and they're, they can cut your thread and break it. So get a nice pair. I think I my pair that I am missing right now might have even been a Revlon tweezers, but they have much nicer rounded, little bit rounded edges than this one. And that, I use that for pulling out stitches if my tatting pin is not working. Now, your tatting pins are simply, well, I, this is my um, pin cushion. And I often will keep my things on here. I've got corsage pins here. I'll unhook that. And you can see, um, that sometimes they don't go through a, your loop very easily. But if you come into my home when I'm tatting, I should say my apartment, it, it, you'll see my, I have a nice wide sofa arm, upholstered sofa arm on my um, recliner. And if I'm sitting in that chair, you'll see a whole row of these sticking up with, all of the my little tools hooked on. So they're readily available right there. Um, this is, oops, let me show you, you the other, you can take a corsage pin and I have some in different sizes and shapes here. This was given to me, it's actually for lace making to pin down your um, uh, when you're laying out some of your lace pieces. And you can see, you can add different beads on. This happens to be a big needle and it is sharp. For tatting, you're going to want to take your, your um, tip of your corsage pin and smooth it out, round it out. It's kind of like a, the ballpoint needles you get for sewing to work on your knit so it doesn't split the threads. Um, their tatting pins have been around for years. They um, use them to pick out stitches. I have, now this is a real big size so I can show you. You can use tapestry needles or embroidery needles that have the rounded end on them. This is a very large large tapestry needle. I want to show you so you can really see it. I am having trouble getting under here, aren't I? Um, and if you look at the tip of it, it looks like it's pointed, but it's not. It's a, got a little bit of a smoothed off bottom. So, and so that slides in between your tatting stitches when you're retro tatting. And if you haven't heard that term, it's been used for years um, for untatting or picking out your stitches and going back <laughs> to get rid of your mistakes. Um, a smaller size of this, of, of the tapestry needle, works very well for a tatting pin. Another thing I keep on here and what you'll need this happens to be a very small size 10 crochet hook. This half size one, set it down on here, let's see, is a size 10. See how tiny that hook is. I guess what I need here is my, my there we go. This is a half size one. I have a whole set of these. 
They come from Handy Hands, and I love them. And I think they go from size 10 up to 15, maybe. And you'll be using these if you're not using a sh shuttle with a hook on it, like this. This is one of the airlit shuttles. Um, you'll want to use a crochet hook for your joinings and for other uses. I find, unfortunately, that on a lot of thread, especially size 10, these hooks are just much too big to fit through the thread and work easily. So having a smaller hook like this, or this is what my eyeglass case is for. It's just a cheap one from the dollar store. And as you saw, it actually came out of my fit my, my potholder tatting bag. I keep my metal, the one has a wooden handle. I keep my crochet hooks in that. Now the metal ones, you can see they're sized differently. They're sized like threads. The um, higher the number, the smaller the thread. And in metal shuttles, unlike the, uh, I'm sorry, in um, metal um, <laughs> crochet hooks that are, <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I, I do plan to get a lot better <laughs> as we go on. Crochet hooks for tatting thread are numbered just the exact opposite of those bigger ones for yarn. Metal hooks, the higher the number, the smaller the hook gets. So a 1516 is for like what you would want on size 80 threads. So then I also have this little, this also fits on the handy hands little ring ho little holder. Um, this is actually a Tatsy, little metal Tatsy ruler that goes up only to two inches. And that small size is really nice just to pick up and use. I have one more very interesting tatting pin that was given to me and I cannot remember who it was that gave it to me. I was at a tatting gathering. This is a cactus thorn. And it's really interesting because it is so sturdy. And although it can look like it's very pointed, which I always thought they were very pointed, this one is not as pointed as a needle or a um, pin. It's actually, I mean, they can, they can hurt you badly if you go into them too hard or run your hand through them too hard, but they are not totally pointed that you can't use them as a tatting pin to pick out stitches. Okay, always helpful and that you should have in your bag is a thread, a threader. This is just one of the inexpensive ones. I also have, I think this is, this is a clover one that has a little cap on it. And I don't know if you can see that very well. It's just a, and it's kind of bent out of shape. It's been getting bent a lot. It's lasted for a long time, even though it keeps getting bent and out of shape. So I like having that around. I think we've gotten through most of the supplies now. Um, when I do samples, I often use a size three. And I want to show you this little piece. I tend to use red and white for samples. In our class, we're going to be making some chain samples to keep in our notebooks or workbooks. Um, tanning workbooks have about uh, been around for years, and if you have a, ever have a chance, find a, a very old one. It's wonderful to have. Um, but making samples of your techniques is what we'll be doing. 
this next week we are going to talk about front side back side tatting so and this is a sample of a, a zigzag chain and there's also s curve chains and all kinds of chains and when you become a uh, if you go on to become a designer it's really wonderful to have a sample book and even for tatting um, and you can like mine are unfortunately just all in a little plastic bag right now and we're going to make a start a little sample chain chart the th this one the stitches face two directions and i've done it in two colors so you can easily see that so that's something we'll be doing next week um, I will mainly be using size 10 for demonstration though. I just have samples out of size three. Oh, here's my, this is a bag full of a lot of different kinds of zigzags, different sizes. You know, it's going from, I think just one up and one down stitch or up to two and then three. And I think this one has four in it. So that's one of the topics we'll be covering. We'll also, in the first six weeks, be making um, onion rings. And we're going to talk about quite a few different, ad more advanced from the just the traditional up and down join. Um, we'll be making having more of those joins. Um, I did miss something and it's sitting right in front of me. Oh my gosh. Okay. I have a couple of shuttles here and I have some tips for winding your threads. I have found I don't um, really like winding around like this. So what I do is when I have my bobbin on the little end of my shuttle, not all, all shuttles have them, I will stick it in there and I take the thread and I kind of weave it between my fingers a little to have some tension. And then I bring it over, Let's see how I brought it over there. And I keep it close to this finger and I kind of use my, I gotta get over my arthritis bump there. I use my um, this hand to turn it and you're, I move my hand back and forth so it gives an even flow um, going around but I can do it much oops my thread's getting short here let's try that again I can do that much faster and it keeps the thread from twisting when you're wrapping like this so that's one little tip now, when you're walking your shuttle, I have found that I usually do this on, on when I'm sitting and I'll, I'll brace it on my knee. You know, you have to be very careful about your tips of your shuttles. You don't want them to get spread out. But what I do is I've got the thread coming out of the bottom of the shuttle. I just keep my, get my finger up and I very gently just put down a tad and maybe you can see let's let's see get that can you see that it's only about a sixteenth of an inch and the clicking i know more a lot of pea tatters love the clicking sound but I, I find it very irritating and so i like to do it this way and if i push down let me get up here see how i can push my finger down and it opens the tip up. I mean, you don't want to open it up. I only open up maybe about an, a little sixteenth of an inch. But if you have it on a surface, you can stick your finger there and do that. Roll it over. I don't know how fast I can do it on, on, the, on the table. I don't know how fast I can do it on a tabletop rather than my knee. But one of the things that's nice about it is 
it because you're holding this thread still it usually lines right up as you go then with the tip piece with the tip the slot i've even done it on this is a shuttle i got from a finger lakes convention and it's a wooden one handmade i believe and it has slots here and, and one over here. And I have found, even found that, let me get a little bit extra out here. Even though they're on opposite sides, um, you can guide it through those slots, this side and then the other side, this side and the other side. So tip on winding shuttles. I have a couple more things on here that I haven't talked about. These are how I keep my markers and thread holders. Um, if you're going to start a piece with a continuous thread, you would use these. You use them to mark um, hold picots open until you're going to do a later join on them. And you can use a lot of different things. Um, one of the things on larger threads, or if I want to make sure my picot doesn't disappear, are yarn markers that knitters and crocheters use. Plain old paper clips. will work. Quilters, coilless pins will work. I've got them in a couple different sizes here. Uh, I've even known people use like an, um, an earring finding that, um, you know, closes up similar to this. This is a jewelry bale, and I really like using these. I like the size, and um, they're so nice to use. Now, these you find in with jewelry supplies. A lot of times I get mine, I get mine from Fire Mountain Gems, where I get a lot of my beads. I believe we've gotten through. <laughs> that was the last supply. In the coming up classes, um, next week, like I said, we're going to be working on front and back side tatting and chains. Um, we'll do front and there's also a plain front side tatting. So we'll be learning about those. And we also, let me think, onion rings, Catherine wheel join. Um, Josephine rings, chains, and how to do Victorian sets. So those are just some of the things that are coming up. Now, um, I've been working all on getting the classes up online for the other classes, my intermediate class being new. I will have be working on that this week to get up all the class pages and the homepage. So you'll be seeing that soon. And it'll always tell you what supplies are coming up next week. And for next week, like I said, you're gonna need two shuttles, each with a contrasting color, your basic shuttle kit. And if there are any handouts, I don't believe there are any for next week. Oh, there, there may be, there'll be some links and I will send the links to you. And I think that's about it for today. Um, if I've missed anything, you'll hear about it next week. And I thank you all very much for coming. And I would like um, to ask you to please remember to subscribe to our channel, click on the bell to get new notifications of video classes and anything else that might happen on online. And I've loved being here. I hope you have a good week 
And I'm going to say bye for now and happy tatting. Bye-bye. <laughs>